Hello and welcome to a different video than usual, but there's something I felt like I wanted to uh, something I wanted to do. Basically, I really do enjoy the Blast Blood Entropy Effect game, so I thought, why not make some updated videos so people know, okay, the game has been updated, maybe there's something new for them to do if they have uh, stopped playing it since it's in early access. There isn't too much new in this update, but there is some new things. So let's just get into it. Uh, one of the first things is they have uh, added more story. They stopped the story for, well, I, to be honest, I don't know how long the story is going to go, but they have added one more mine challenge. They have added uh, one more, like, Phenonema cutscene, which you would need uh, three Phenonema parts to see. And they also introduced a tactics tree, which will let you see how to get to the, like, different tactics. Like, if you want to, like, gain a specific tactic, then it will tell you which tactics you have to get before you can get the one you want. So if you know, like, oh, okay, I want to go for a burn build or something, or a firing build, then you can also see, like, okay, what do I need to get, like, the ones that combine with it. Which is really helpful. Also lets you know that, like, if you're going for the achievements that is uh, to have all of a specific type, then it's really useful also. When it comes to the combat, uh... No, right, this is not the characters. Uh, optimized, so basically this makes it uh, uh, optimize the tactics tab of the character details displayed during combat so passed. Basically, when you pass and look at your tactics, it will have now be like categorized into basic attack, skill, legacy skill. So you know, like, okay, which of my tactics uh, improve upon what I do. So okay, I have a lot of basic attacks. Maybe I should keep going for that or do something else. Uh, increase the summon entities limits of some tactics. I'm not entirely sure which ones they're talking about, but I'm guessing they mean the ones like maybe they're talking about the summoning stuff like the slime, the mines, or the umber tentacle, or they might be talking about like the ice spikes or the fire, um, the, like fire spirits. Not entirely sure. Uh, they have renamed a tactic. They also modified the double tactic lightning chain to trigger immediate pulse on lightning hit enemies. Uh, added a visual guide for jumping before the floating mine level. I'm not entirely sure what this means. So that is something somebody in the comments may be able to tell me because I'm not entirely sure. Like, I'm, it might be like mid-boss battle in like Omega Zone, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so, so no, no use is invisible less often in combat, so it just means he won't spam that ability as much. In easy mode, escape from death is now useful three ti more times. So if you have the ability and you play in easy mode, then you basically have three revives instead of just one. Improve the platforming experience for some stages. I am not entirely sure like what the real difference is, but that, that it should be better now. And refi refined interactive tutorials. Well, I don't know how they changed the tutorial, but it might be better now. They also boosted my Natsume's base attack. I'm not sure by how much. I kind of wish they said, but now she will be stronger. They also buffed her legacy skill by extending uh, the duration of it, which I'm guessing it also means that you can, it deals more damage total. Ragnar's legacy skill has kind of been nerfed, but maybe buffed. Uh, it now absorbs more health, but it deals less damage. So now it's like more safe to use it, so that we don't lose as much health, but, well, you don't do as much damage. So if you really wanted some damaging legacy skills, then that might not be for you. And once legacy skills shroud fall now, prioritize the to enemies, so instead of just prioritizing a random enemy, if you, there is a range enemy on the screen, then it probably will target it. And as legacy skill crest arcs now automatically blossom when an enemy gets near and neutralizes their super armor for a while. Just a fine buff. And the number of banishing rays for Kokonoi's potential armament number 5, version 7.10. Banishing rays, that's a long name, are deployed using the Basically, if you don't, if you just remember how to use the skill, it's that one. There is no longer limited by the number of remaining components. That is something I did not know, but apparently you could only have so have as many of them as there were like components laying on the ground or something. And now that is not the case, which is interesting. Pokémon's block now can deter enemies. Basically means now, uh, well, at least what I'm guessing is that if you play Hawkman and you like really try to predict that they are trying to do something before they even try to attack you, then they probably won't attack you. 
So now you actually have to react to the, the enemy attacking you. And this is definitely the most, or the hugest, change of them all. Independent cooldowns now apply to each character's legacy skill, and the associated effects and strategies have been adjusted accordingly as well. So basically what this means is, when you use a legacy skill before this update, when you use one legacy skill, both of your legacy skills goes on cooldown. With this, if you use only one legacy skill, then only that legacy skill will go on cooldown, which means that you can use both separately. So if you want to have like Ragnar's uh, legacy skill to heal, or Hak and Hakuman's legacy skill to like block damage, then you don't have to be careful like, okay, I want to heal now, but if I do, I can't block damage with Hakuman's. Now you can just use Ragnar's legacy skill, and then you still have Hakuman's uh, legacy skill for when you need it, which is real big. Because now you don't have to think about like which legacy skill I'm going to use. I'm going to go for the damage with this one. I'm going to go for the utility with that one. Now you can just, okay, I'm going to use for this now because it works now. And then I wait to use my other one until when it needs to be used. Uh, so that's really huge. Other than that, other optimization out of the feature to recover corrupt save files. Which is pretty nice. Not sure how, but I mean, hopefully your uh, save file won't be corrupted at all, but... At least they have something to save it. They also renamed samples to enemies. I mean, sure, it might have been confusing for like people when they start first started playing, but I mean, you you get that samples means enemies after a while. That's sure. Uh, improved UI for Steam Deck and other handheld devices. I can't say too much about that since I don't have a Steam Deck, so I don't know how it is improved, but it is improved. Enabled airborne dashing in the lobby. Now, basically, when you're a little, little, little robot guy, you can dash around in the air and. My god, it's so much fun to do it because the speed they gave him is a little too strong. Uh, I skipped a cut- oh, well, I didn't skip a cutscene, I went so fast that when I hit the cutscene trigger, my character was not besides the character he was supposed to talk to, so I could not see anything that he was saying. So that is something they need to fix, but other than that, it's real fun. And various additional fixes and tricks. One of those is something I feel was a stupid move. This is something that should change in some way. Uh, from what I saw, when you play now, before, if you got a corruption, you could like go to the store and uh, you could remove one negative corruption effect. Right now, they have changed it so that instead of removing it entirely, you will uh, it will remove one tick from it. So like normally, if you play on hard mode or if you play on hard mode, then it takes like ten rooms for it to get removed, and if you play on normal mode, it takes five ticks or five rooms. The problem is that if you go to the, um, when you're in the last place, the like roguelike place, the Omega room, the problem there is one like uh, tick from that uh, corruption effect is basically when the bar goes full and you gain more. The problem is that takes a long while, so if you have a corruption effect there, even like reducing it by one, it takes so long to get rid of corruption effects. Like you can't just wait for it. But still, that takes so long and it's so annoying. Like, the fact that, like, I can understand that they don't want you to, like, stack positive corruption effects and stuff. But even then, it just... It takes far too long. I really hope that they change the, like, remove one uh, tick from the negative corruption effects to at least, like, reduce one to one tick or reduce one by half. Or at least something better than just reducing one of the ticks from it. Like, in normal mode, sure, probably not that hard, but in hard mode, it's just annoying. Like, I had a really bad corruption effect, like Exhaustion, uh, when I played the game previously today. And it had like 8 ticks, so I had to like, like, wait like 10 minutes plus probably, just for it to be gone, because I couldn't get rid of it in any other way. So that was annoying. So I, that is something I hope to fix, but other than that, uh, pretty nice updates. And I, I mean, I ranted a little bit there, but yeah, that's basically it for its updates. This update at least. So, uh, I'll probably inform you when the next update comes out and what that will bring. But anyways, that's it for right now. So, thank you all so very much for watching. Hope you're having a fantastic day and bye-bye. Uh,